What's up, my lovely little persimmons? This is Rob from A Gay Guy Plays, and this is my little kitty baby, Apollo. Today on Hashtag Confirmed, we're going to be jumping into DevStream 129 to take a look at all of the cool new things that are coming up. If you guys are looking for the Goss Abilities Breakdown, though, I'll go ahead and link that link up in the corner for you because I've done that in a separate video. Regardless, without ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. Alrighty, so now that I've wiped a good bit of cat hair off of my face, let's go ahead and jump into some non-acided housekeeping. Starting off with a little bit of a personal announcement. So this upcoming Tuesday, July 30th, is actually the day before my birthday. So I figured that I would go ahead and have a birthday eve stream. Um, there we'll be giving away some platinum as well as the NYX Prime and Rhino Prime Volt access packs um, and I'm actually going to be creating my own Loki Prime access pack which is going to be really really fun. I'll have my own favorite Prime weapons in there. That one will be PC only but I think a majority of the giveaways that we'll be doing are going to be across all platforms. Also we're just going to do some random weird shit on there as well so hopefully you will join me for that. The time is not 100% nailed down yet so make sure you're following me on my social media or that you have notifications on for the channel so you can kind of see exactly when that that is dropping in so be sure drop by say hi um, and let's go ahead and move into the actual news so first and foremost since we're talking about events DE did tease the fact that there's definitely going to be a double credits weekend next weekend but they're also going to try to um, toss in a summer event they said cool off in Warframe I don't know but just be aware there's gonna be something happening this weekend it's gonna be like a fun filled week uh, moving on from that DE Scott did announced that he just got done finishing uh, putting the finishing touches on Grendel's kit and that he is back to work on reworking Vauban. So for those of you guys wondering if that is in limbo, no, he's actively working on it now, but it doesn't sound like he's got anything that he's willing to show quite yet, so don't get too excited, but it should be on its way. Next up, one thing that was definitely weighing heavy on my mind is where is Melee 3.0? Um, and they said that they're working on weapon balance, but it is a bit up in the air right now. The actual quote that they stated was, they're cracking the surface on it. So I I don't think that we're going to see anything big with Melee 3.0 come out anytime soon, which kind of breaks my heart because I feel like we've been waiting on that for quite a while. Now, this next section is going to be heavily Empyrean based. If you have not watched my Empyrean rundown video, I'm going to go ahead and toss a link up to that in the corner just in case you missed it. But one of the things that they brought up because everybody was asking about this, like, listen, it's all is losing its dodge and everybody is getting a dodge, right? How exactly is that going to happen? Well, they did say that basically what's going to happen is when you use your dodge key on your arc wing, it'll actually blink you forward. When you dodge to the left and the right, it'll still be the traditional rolls, but dodging forward will cause you to blink. Now, the it's all in replacement for that blink is actually going to be getting an arc wing version of a rip line. So it'll actually be able to pull itself onto terrain and pull enemies towards it. They said that it's a bit fun, but you know, in my head, I'm kind of like, mm, how exactly is that going to work? But they did say that it worked better than they thought it would. So I'm excited to go ahead and see that in action. Plus, it's kind of in theme of the it's all sucking things towards it, right? Because it's got, you know, the, you know, the the crush cosmic crush thing and it can go invisible so i mean yeah good moving on um they did say that an arc wing rebalance is happening and this scares me shitless i'm gonna be honest with you they are rescaling certain arc wing abilities and have stated to expect that there will be some violent changes so i'm gonna call this now because the amisha is the trinity of arc wings and we know what's happened to Trinity over and over and over again. So uh, can I get an F for Amisha in chat? Because whew, that's going to sting. Um, moving along, they are shooting for an Empyrean release this fall. But I do want to specify that is an intent and not a promise. They wanted to make sure not to set a date in stone because they did not want to disappoint you guys. They also stated that while they are trying to launch the Kingpin system with Empyrean, those two are not actually intrinsically linked. So we're going to be seeing the Kingpin system at some point, and we might not even necessarily see it start off in Empyrean. Um, next up, they did state 
that uh, new players are probably going to have to hitch a ride with veteran players who have had the resources to build their dry docks and research the tech. So for everybody who shits on veterans and more dedicated players, listen, veterans and dedicated players, y'all can live together and be happy. It's the new players that are going to be hitching rides, okay? So make sure you new players don't start being snarky and bitchy to all the veteran and dedicated players out there, all right? <laughs> listen, you're going to be in our passenger seat, so you need to chill the hell out, okay? Um, they did say, however, that DE is considering a way to try out Railjack, so it might just be like you going on a loan Railjack, like it loan as in not a loan, but like they loaned it to you and nothing that you have in there is necessarily your own. So it was like a rent a car. Uh, so that is definitely an option because they didn't want to lock anybody out of it um, straight out of the gate. But as it stands right now, new players get in the passenger seat. Um, and then to finish that part out, they did say that they are planning on launching a couple planets in deep space. So what that sounds like to me is they're going to be launching... Um, from some of the bigger nodes, kind of like how we have like Jupiter and then it expands out to those nodes. It looks like they're going to be doing a couple planets for us to play with, but not the entire chart that we saw on the Railjack demo. So definitely keep that in mind. So from Railjack, we're going ahead and fly ourselves into the customization screen. Wow. Oh, that cat hair is still there. <clears throat> but... It's caught flying into the customization screen and we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the new deluxe skins that are coming out because y'all know it wouldn't be a Warframe dev stream if we didn't have a slew of deluxes for you to pick up, right? Uh, so, first one first is Hero Deluxe. That cat hair fucked me up. Um, now, this one is, like I was saying, reminded me a lot of um, that tactical game from Blizzard that I just forgot, that Warcraft. Like, the not the Zerg, not the human ones, but, you know, the mystical-looking ones. Um, and as we get a closer look at it, I think the detail on it is quite beautiful. They did say that there's a little bit of lore behind the skin, that he sacrificed his physical body for um, this energy body and for his powers and all of that kind of stuff. So, it looks pretty sick. Is it my favorite out there? Not so much. The theme is very, very interesting. Looks kind of cool. But what I really liked is his skin for the spear guns. That looks like really motherfucking regal. I think that it looks super duper dope. It fits in with the deluxe skin quite well. Next up, for those of you guys who did not think that it was gonna happen, yes, we do have some progress on Zephyr Deluxe. It's just progress. It's not like a full on thing. It's just a little bit, it looks rough to me. The boots look kind of crazy, but I do have to say that the back and the helmet look kind of dope. I'm sure that this is not the final thing, but there's some progress being made, so know that they did not forget about it. Um, it's coming along. The artist who's just uh, devoted their time to it is a little bit busy. Now, let's go ahead and move into what I feel like was the hot topic on Twitter when I went ahead and tweeted it out, uh, was the Wukong Deluxe skin. A lot of, well not a lot of people, a couple people were saying that they were not necessarily super fond of it. Um, but I do have some remarks to make because I rewatched the dev stream and I do have to say that the texture looks a little bit weird. But I think it's mainly because of the fact that it's based off of magma and you see some of the energy effects peeking out from underneath it. So if you have a weird color customization that doesn't necessarily work with that, it might make the textures look a little strange. So keep that in mind. Also, they were working off a dead build that caused certain things to get a little jittery. So that might have also messed up the look of the texture. Um, one of the other things that I also wanted to point out is that some people on Twitter were saying that um, they really missed like the shoulder armor and the hip armor pieces and all of that kind of stuff um, from the original and all we really saw was like the base skin of it. Uh, I did want to go ahead and mention before they moved into the next segment when they were taking a look at loadouts, they actually flashed um, an image of him with a shoulder piece so it he's going to have a lot of the other like uh, extra armory bits that we saw from the original concept art. It just wasn't shown on the base set for some reason. Um, and it just ended up showing up before they swapped loadouts. I don't know what the deal is with that, but it might just be kind of like a shoulder attachment, kind of like how Banshee has a shoulder attachment on her base. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, and last but not least, I'm sure that some of you are very freaking happy. And I feel like they did this because they showed off um, Goss. 
uh, Volt is finally getting cloth physics. <laughs> so it's like, here Volt, you can have cloth physics. Enjoy that. We're gonna show off your new shiny buddy. Now, I don't want to get into the whole Goss versus Volt um, talk until Goss is actually released, but, you know, there's, there's, there's definitely some interesting things there. If you guys have not seen the Goss video, I'll go ahead and leave that linked up in the corner uh, because I did do a separate cover on that. Regardless, what this led into was something very, very interesting. And I kind of love the fact that they're adding this feature in, um, which is look link and mod link. So what you'll actually find next to the um, little icon of the capture screen that they've added in the top corner of the customizations is something that you'll actually be able to link your looks to other people in the game. And what'll end up happening is they can actually go ahead and try on that look to see how it's gonna look on their Warframe. Now, if they don't have the same Warframe equipped as you, they can actually swap into the Warframe to see how it's gonna look um, for their Warframe, or what they can do is they can use the customization pieces that you currently have and the colors that you have on yours and transfer it to the Warframe that they've currently got on, and it'll show it on that. So they'll have the option to do one of the two, but you can now look Link, and it did look like um, I'm saying look so many times it's throwing me off that Rebecca was going to be able to type in a certain um, chat command for it because they did say that you'd be able to do it on relays or in chats with groups and stuff like that. So I'm assuming it's not just something that you have to constantly go into the arsenal for because of the fact that she went specifically in to try to type something. So there might be a command um, that needs to get programmed in for that, but it looks like it will be something that you will be able to link from chat directly instead of specifically from the UI. Now, she did actually go ahead and jump into the UI as well and show off mod link. Now, mod link is very, very similar. When you go into your modding screen, there will be a little link icon um, and you'll be able to link your mod setup to uh, anybody who wants to take a look at it. And basically what ends up happening is they're brought to a screen where they can preview the mods. And if they have the mod, they can just hit equip and then boom, it's in there for them, which is very, very handy and will make it easy to be able to communicate things in game without me having to do it. Because so many times on stream, I get asked for builds or I get asked for color customizations. And I think that this will be nice to be able to just be like, Look, just message me in game, look like, boom, send it to you so that I don't have to deal with it at all because ugh, sometimes it's just like, I'm like killing things. I can't tell you what color codes I have on there. So that's definitely nice. They also showed out some um, loadout UI upgrades. Now here's the thing. I don't use loadouts. I'm not a loadout person. So I don't really, I don't see like it, th all everything that they showed off looked very nice. You're able to favorite certain loadouts. You're able to change the icons on certain loadouts, yada, 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 so on and so forth. It doesn't apply to me because I never, I don't really use them. Don't be mad, but that's just what the reality of it. But it looked pretty, so good for you. Um, now, the last thing that they wanted to go ahead and mention is an Ikea frame thing. And I fucking hate Ikea frame, but this one is kind of okay in my books. Uh, but basically they introduced like a new guitar um, cosmetic that you could put in your ship. I don't remember the name because it's Ikea frame. But basically they said that if you picked it up and you put it on your ship, that what you would actually get alongside of it is an emote where you would be able to play the guitar. And I was like, okay, it's a cosmetic for the ship that serves a purpose. It's not just like, a fucking Roomba that runs around and irritates you while you're trying to record YouTube videos. I'm just saying this actually serves a function. I'm kind of down with it. So I can't wait to see them uh, finish that up. But also in my head, it makes me think, oh, so you have time to program this in, but you can't fix Satanya's uh, uh, razor wing issue? Just saying. Let's go ahead and jump into something that won't trigger specific people in the community. She's still trash. Um, so the big topic that I wanted to go ahead and cover is the Duviri Paradox because they showed this off early in the stream and there were some very interesting tidbits in this one. Um, so first and foremost, they went ahead and showed off some of the artwork from there. And the first one was a Dax soldier or a form of Dax. Now, the interesting thing about the art that they showed off is that there are actually different versions of the Dax. So they had like a skeletal version, they had one with a spine, um, one with just ribs, and they said that uh, you might, there might, these might be some different states you see them in. 
and I'm like, since when do we ever see just the bones of an enemy that we're fighting unless we've killed them? Like, I don't really understand how that's going to be a thing, but it is definitely an interesting thing to note. Uh, they also showed off a new katana-style weapon um, that they did... They said we're not getting it, but they made it sound like we're going to be getting it. So I'm really excited because that new Nakana looks absolutely sickening, and it looks like it could be a two-handed Nakana, so I'm feeling kind of juicy off of that one. Um, regardless... Really, really excited for that. Then they also showed the artwork of the Dax Soldier on a horse. And I'm thinking, are we going to get that too? <laughs> I mean, you're giving us the sword. Can we also have the horse? Like, listen, it, it's a two-part deal. Can we get both? I mean, you've never said no before. Uh, the next thing, speaking of creatures that live in this void, uh, they showed off some artwork for the tu Tuberfacid. Tuberfacid? Listen, they had more practice saying it um, than I did. But it's a gigantic spaceship snake that they went ahead and put in the Plains of Duveri trailer. So you see it kind of flying along in the skies. Um, they said that uh, they don't know what it is. I don't think they know what it's going to function as quite yet. I mean, it would be sick if we could do a transference into that at some point. Just putting that out there, DE. You have not let us transfer into anything thus far. Let that be the first creature that we do it to, please. Um, but yeah, they, it doesn't seem like they have any use for it. I think they just wanted it as a dramatic set piece. Now, this is where I walk around with a little bit of egg on my face, but not as much egg, like just like a smattering of it. It's like you threw an egg, um, at the wall next to me and I got hit with a little bit of the yolk, not the full egg on the face. Uh, but they did say that the Tenno is the old man that we see. They've confirmed it. But they also stated, they also stated that life is hard in the void. So they wanted to kind of like grizzle him up a little bit. And after, you know, they put on the, uh, the grime and the facial hair and then they got him back with his actual hair that he looked like Hayden Tenno. So they confirmed that they knew that it looked like Hayden Tenno and they shipped it. And it was confusing to the people who knew the old, you know, like, where Warframe came from kind of inspiration thing. So, I'm saying I was wrong, but I'm saying where you could potentially see where I would think that it could be something else, I'm just saying, all right? So there was clarification on that, but they did also confirm that this is specifically the void that we're in. Um, now, another thing that they had mentioned with that, since we're on the tip of cosmetics, is that cosmetics are confirmed to scale with your adult operator. Um, but it's not confirmed that they're actually going to let us do that. <laughs> the intent right now is for us to be able to use all the cosmetics uh, that we have, but it's not confirmed because they also stated that, you know, that might be the stock uniform because we do have bare feet as operators and we also do have cat ears as operators and exactly how would that work on an adult? I don't know, but I want my bare feet, DE. Just putting that out there to you guys. <laughs> um, now, the last thing that they did want to touch on was the fact that everything that you saw from the trailer on Plains of Deviri was actually a set. It's a place that you can actually be and play on. Now, whether that's a specific zone or whatnot, I don't know, but they have created it. It exists. It's not just CGI. Um, but the most interesting part of it was they were showing off some animations that were in the plains of Duveri, and legitimately, they showed off the fact that everything is desaturated, kind of like black and white, but there will be spots of color. Now, they specifically stated that there would be a function to that, which is really, really interesting um, that the desaturation isn't just for cosmetic effect, but that is actually going to be tied into gameplay. So, not 100% sure what that means. That leaves a lot for speculation, but let's be real. I'm just going to be straightforward with you. Planes of Duveri is a ways away. Before that, we're going to be seeing New War, then we're most likely going to be seeing Empyrean, and then we're going to see Planes of Duveri like three years from now. I'm just, I'm just saying it's a ways away. So, uh, I mean, we can speculate all we want, but we've got a lot of time to speculate. Uh, regardless, let me know how you feel about all of this down in the comments below. Which deluxe skin are you the most excited for? Do you feel like you didn't like the Wukong skin as much? 
I don't know. Um, in addition, tell me uh, how you feel about the look links and the loadouts. How do you feel about that? And are you excited for Empyrean now that you can blink all over the place? Toss all of your feelings down there and don't forget that I will be doing that special stream Tuesday, July 30th. So keep your eye out on social media for all of that. And that about does it for me for now. So as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your persimmons. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.